Hello everybody, I am Dr. Sumara Rashid Meer and I work as a general practitioner at Esther Discovery Garden. Today I am going to talk about one of the most common procedures that, do, that we do at our dental clinic and that's extraction and then I am going to follow it up by the various options that are available to replace extracted teeth. Okay, coming back to extraction, yes, it is one of the most common procedures done. But if you ask me, it's my least favorite one. That's the last option I actually give to my patients. Because, you know, modern dentistry is more about saving teeth and not removing it. I do understand when patients come to me, they are in severe pain. And the first thing that comes to their mind is, doctor, please get this tooth out. I really feel this thing should change, you know. You should rather go to the doctor and say, okay, take care of my pain and do whatever you can to save my tooth. Because I strongly believe there's nothing like your own teeth. There are options available to replace them, but again, you should save whatever is with you. Why do I say that? See, when you remove a tooth, it is not like there's just a space left in your arch. It doesn't work like that. It leaves a lot of things behind. Like to start off with, the tight contact that you had between your tooth, that is lost. It causes food impaction. Teeth have a tendency to shift towards the space created by the extracted tooth. Not only in that arch, even in the opposing arch. Because for example, if you remove your upper tooth, the lower tooth has nothing to stop it from moving. So it basically supra erupts. We call it supra eruption. So again, the tight contact which was with the adjacent tooth, it's lost. It causes food impaction, causes gingivitis, and you know, the cycle goes on and on. Again, our bones, you know, they are similar to muscles. They need stimulation. They need that constant stimulation. And that is provided by your teeth, by chewing, by biting. When you remove the tooth, the bone under that tooth, it weakens, it undergoes atrophy, it doesn't stay the same. So again, I would tell you, please try to save your tooth as much as possible. But having said that, see, there are cases where we can't help it. We have to extract, there's no other option available. After exploring everything, we come down to the thing, okay, we will extract your tooth. When you go to the dentist for an extraction, please go and ask them what is the treatment plan. Don't stop at extraction, no. Because, you know, we are humans. Even if I go and I don't have any pain, I'll forget about everything. Okay, my pain is over. Shouldn't be like that. Ask your dentist, what next? After you remove my tooth, when do I come back? How can I replace my teeth? Please don't shy away from asking questions. You have a right to ask. Make a list of questions. Ask your doctor so that, you know, you're mentally prepared. When do I go next? Otherwise, I'm telling you, you're going to forget. So, basically, talking about the options of removing after, after extraction, post-extraction, According to me, the best choice available, yes, is a dental implant. Why do I say that? Because dental implant is the only thing that actually replaces your entire tooth. Not just the crown, it replaces the root as well. As the word signifies, implant. It is basically anchored in your bone, you know, in your jaw. And it's held together by the bone. So it just can't get more natural than that. And then a crown is built on top of the implant. If you ask me, what are the disadvantages? Well, I would say, uh, okay, for me, it's not a disadvantage, to be honest with you. It is a lengthy procedure. The healing time is more. But when it comes to our health, I think this bit of compromise you should make, it's all about a little bit of patience because this is something which is going to stay lifelong, provided it's done well and it's maintained well. So yes, dental implant should be the first choice. Again, yeah, it is expensive than other procedures. Most of the insurance don't cover it. But again, yeah, when it comes to health, don't compromise. The second option would be a bridge. We have been doing bridges for a very, very long time and it is also a very good option. Herein, the root is of course not replaced. It's something like, you know, for example, let me say, I will be able to explain it better with this. For example, this tooth is missing. So what do we do? We take support from the neighboring teeth. So we kind of shape them and we put three pieces together. Again, this also helps. It uh, maintains the space that was created. It also helps with the bone. So this is also a very good option. So you could go for a bridge. If both these options, for example, don't work for you for one reason or the other, and let me just say one more thing here. A dental implant, it doesn't work like, you know, my friend did it, so I'll also do it. No, because it varies from patient to patient. The dentist has to have a look on your overall health, on your oral health, and then he can, you know, tell you whether you can go for it, whether you're a candidate for, for a dental implant or not. Now, if for some reason both these options don't work for you, again, I would say do something about it. Go for a removable denture. A removable denture, okay, it's not as comfortable as these two, but it serves the purpose. It comes with an acrylic plate. 
to which the teeth are attached. It depends on the number of teeth you don't have in your arch. Those number of teeth will be attached to the plaque. If you don't have all the teeth, it's called a complete denture. If all the teeth are removed, if it's just one or two, then we call it a partial denture. In that case, you have to remove the plate. You have to wash it. You can put it in water and then you can put it again. See, so some patients, I actually advise them. I tell them, okay, if you can't afford an implant or a bridge right now, go for this and when you go back home you can go for an implant or a bridge so that is also an option that you can look at having said that see whatever be the option you go for it's very very important to maintain it if you don't you will have problems so please follow a very strict oral hygiene brushing twice there's no compromise on that flossing no compromise at all patients do get lazy when it comes to flossing and some of them actually find it difficult Trust me, it's not difficult, it's very easy. Please come to us, we'll teach you how to do it. And if you have an artificial process in your mouth, there are a lot of aids available. There are interdental brushes, there are flosses which are specifically used for implants and which can be used under the bridge. Ask your dentist, use them, gargle regularly. And yes, you should go for regular checkups once in three months or if not possible, once in six months at least. That's about it. My patients always ask me, doctor, what do we do? I would tell them, you don't need to brush all your teeth, only the ones you want to say. So thanks a lot for listening to me. I wish you all Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's welcome 2018 with lots of beautiful smiles. Thank you once again.